Hello, good morning, and good afternoon, wherever we are in the world today. My name is Rosa Maria Kostic Cisneros, and I am working with the Independent Theatre Hungary on this incredible project where we're sitting down with various um, artists and theatre uh, practitioners from all walks of life. Um, and they're telling us a bit about who they are, uh, how the work that they're involved in, and their <clears throat> framing different parts of the work and I'm very lucky today to sit down with Sebastiano Spinella who is a circus and performing artist um, who is one of the main protagonists of the play Children of the Wind. Um, hello Sebastiano, how are you today? Hello Rosa. Hello, Thank hello. You. I'm fine, it's a nice weather, finally it's not so hot anymore. Yes, so yes. I'm sitting in my yard and are you right now in Italy? I am in Italy. I am uh, 70 kilometers north of Rome, capital. Okay. I used to live in Rome, but uh, two years ago we decided to move to the countryside. Okay. And that was a good choice, seeing what happened in the last yes. years. Yes, we are lucky course. being in the countryside. We can be outside. And though I, I go to Rome often to meet my Roma fellows and collaborators. Yes, yes. So it's nice that you can be near the city, but also um, a bit further. Uh, yeah. So can you can you tell me a little bit um, and introduce yourself for for those of, of for people watching and listening that might not know who you are? Um, I said you're a circus and performing artist, but can you tell me a little bit more? Well, uh, I. I have been a, a circus and performing artist uh, for many years. I, I started as a street performer. I did a clown school and circus school. So my first, uh, the first 10 years of my career has been especially uh, uh, working with the street performance and the small street uh, companies, uh, street theater companies. And also this is uh, actually what uh, have uh, uh, made the meeting with the Roma culture. And I've been working uh, with uh, several companies, <clears throat> theater companies that uh, travels uh, with uh, by horse wagons. Okay. Wow. You know, in England, there are uh, there is a whole movement of people, and in France too, of people that have gone back to a way of life uh, with the horse wagons and traveling, and so they do traveling. Also, they all they have take over the old the traveling uh, artisanry and things like that. This is how I slowly got in got to know the Roma the Roma culture because you see uh, I don't I'm not born in in a Roma in a Roma um, collective or in a Roma community I'm a born in Sicily from uh, uh, average uh, Sicilian family but my grandmother <clears throat> My grandmother, she used to dress like a gypsy, act like a gypsy, talk like a gypsy. And when I was very little, she secretly uh, uh, told me that uh, we are of Roma uh, roots, okay. ancient Roma roots. Yeah. So you see, as you told, I am Sebastiano Spinella, but I found all the documents uh, of my family that says Spinelli, okay. not Spinella. And in my search for, uh, for uh, my roots, I understood that Spinelli, it's a large uh, community of uh, uh, Italian, Roma and Sinti of a region here in the central, uh, central Italy. Oh, wow. So without having uh, a real proof, I understood out of my experience of my life uh, with uh, traveling and traveling horse wagons and 
getting in touch and loving uh, old tradition, Roma tradition. And this story of the family name, I decided at a certain point that uh, this was what I wanted and to be. Mm. Wanted mm. to be. I like to call myself a caminante. <laughs> it's uh, the walker. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, it's uh, um, a um, a community in Sicily of mm. probably Roma or mixed mm. Roma um, uh, roots that uh, call themselves caminanti, the walkers. Yeah. I like to walk a lot, and I've been walking a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, also beside the horses with the horse wagons. Yes. So today I like to consider myself not as an artist, as I think that uh, human being, we are all artists. Mm. I like to say I'm an artisan mm. because I made a profession out of my art. I, I worked with uh, uh, a lot with theater, from street theater to, to um, like, uh, uh, let's say institutional theater and also um, experimental theater with companies different kind of theaters and uh, theater made me uh, develop my talent for music okay. and so I work a lot with music I study uh, uh, I'm self self taught in theater okay. and in music but I also have uh, developed uh, um, the profession of uh, uh, musical instrument reparation, uh, restoring and uh, um, uh, tuning. And I have specialized myself on the instrument of the accordion because accordion is the queen, the king instrument of the Roma culture. Yeah. And so I, I, today I teach theater and music and this artisanry of uh, tuning and restore instruments to young uh, Roma, uh, to young Roma peers and pe oh, children. And... That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, uh, you know, I love this. Um... I mean, it's also sad that, you know, you, you, you use the word your grandmother had to tell you in secret, you know, yeah. and kind of self-identify in secret. And there are many um, reasons why I'm assuming she might have had to have done that um, because anti-gypsyism is, is quite alive and serious. And that's a term that's very modern now, but this, you know, there's a whole legacy and historical um reality that is not often taught um and not really known um so you know it, it it's sad that that but it's also a very um normalized way that people had to hide or change their names um in order to survive in order to flee persecution so you know it, it's um and I didn't know this, that the Spinelli was a family uh, name from a the Roma Sinti community in Italy. So I thank you for teaching me that because I, you know, I, I feel there's so much to learn. And also we're, we're a community of oral history. You know, it's only now that we're in this digital, digital age that we can, you know. Dig. <laughs> yeah. We are digging and finding yes. out. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, you, you've, and you've also said that you're uh, a caminante, so this, this walker. So that's a lovely way to frame the, the work that we're going to talk about, Children of the Wind. Um, so can you, can you tell me a little bit about this um, piece of theater work and your um, role in the theater work, in the work, please? Yeah. Uh, the, the script is uh, is uh, autobiographic mm. it's uh, actually i i choose to tell about my life uh to give it was a kind of uh, also um, own uh, self therapy for sure. for defining mm. defining myself mm. 
uh, because I had all this confusion about being or not being a Roma and being so much involved into the Roma community struggles of today and how I came to this, mm. how my life kind of directed me to this point where I, I, I choose to be part of the Roma community in Europe. And uh, this project has uh, helped me a lot to define myself. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, mainly autobiographic and that's why I tell about my grandmother. The whole thing begins with my, the story of my grandmother. Of, of course, I have used a lot of poetic I, because I, I sing songs to her and I tell how she kind of passed the message to me and uh, out of a big family, I was the only one receiving it and uh, and I feel a duty also to bring it forward mm -hmm. still today a good part of this family doesn't accept this reality and uh, I am the black sheep I have decided to work with the gypsies yeah. I'm probably drug addict and I am you know living a strange life uh, no no I have uh, I have uh, recognized the troubles of the gypsy community. I find uh, uh, in myself uh, the talent of a good uh, uh, life teacher. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, decided to help the young people yeah. to define themselves, to find out what it is to be Roma and to find out why in the world they live in this situation how comes they are born there and they have to deal with being that personalities and that realities uh, with all the struggle they have so i kind of in the beginning i honor the the figure of my grandmother as a, as a beginner of my story mm -hmm. and uh, i in the middle part of the of the play i tell about my experience uh, with as a traveling artist i with the street theater i travel all over europe i do camps with other artists we live as the gypsies they used to live in the 1800 we make camps with our bands we make a fire in the middle we cook food together and this <clears throat> And also later when I met the horse wagon uh, community, I did a long travels with them, left my van somewhere parked and walked, taking care of the horses. And there I kind of lived a kind of uh, deja vu, you know, a kind mm. of uh, life. Uh, I know this life. Mm. I've been living this before. It must be part of my of my genetic yes. you know yes. i really felt home and even today that i am settled down i have decided to live in the countryside because it gives me a better possibility to live in a more natural way yes because that is what i i observe even today even in the big cities in the roma community there is a, an unbreakable bond to nature mm. even if it's not uh, uh, it's not conscient, it's not um, green. Yes. There is a lot of, of confusion, especially in the camps here in, uh, in Italy. Uh, there is not an ecological uh, uh, mind, but there is a, a strong, strong bond toward it yeah. that only needs to be informed to be sustained to be uh, grown to, yes. to be grown yes and can you can you describe a moment is there memorable moments in the play for you um because you know it, it's all quite personal and you said at the beginning that it was in a way a bit of a therapy so a bit cathartic in some sense yes so is there something that really stands out for you from either working on it performing it that you might want to share with us yes uh, the third part of the of the play i i tell about the experience i had the ten, 
now it's 15, nearly 20 years long experience I have with this little community in the, in the city of Rome, this little Roma community of Serbian origin. Actually, they come from the, from the uh, frontier between uh, uh, Serbia and Romania. Mm -hmm. So they speak both languages and they speak Romanes. And uh, I have seen the development of the uh, uh, community and of the, of the settlement between uh, the last 20 years um, considering the uh, intervention of, uh, of, the, of the institutions the last 10 years. Actually, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, uh, there was a huge uh, shift in the politics in, in Italy and in Rome especially and the big cities like Milano and, and uh, Torino, the main big cities of Italy all the Roma communities were evicted uh, from the settlements, uh, uh, self-builded settlements in the cities and big, uh, um, big uh, institutional settlements has been built up, made of uh, metal containers uh, in an area far away from the center of the city and from any uh, facilities and uh, fenced with the uh, armed guardians at the entrance you have to show your id card to come in and in a kind of uh, kind of segregation uh, segregational camp yeah. yeah and i have seen i have testified the change from the uh, self builded settlement to the new institutional settlement which was done in a very hurry and with a lot of, uh, uh, n n with no attention to the real uh, 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 needs of the community. And uh, these this have put the whole community into a very a severe situation uh, as a scapegoat. Mm for mm -hmm. any any problem big problem that happens in uh, in italy often the roma culture is uh, seen as the scapegoat yes so i i tell in the last part of the of the play i tell about this community and what i have seen so the most uh, coming back to your question the most uh, emotional, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, moments for me of the plays are uh, three. One is when I sing a song to my grandmother, mm -hmm. because I I acknowledge and thank her. Mm -hmm. One is uh, <clears throat> when I tell about uh, my horse wagon experience. And the third uh, sad one is when I play, I play the trumpet in a moment of the play, uh, and behind there is uh, the screening of uh, of uh, the camp and the young people that uh, died in the camp because of uh, fire and big fire that happened in the in the settlement because no fire extinguisher were put by the institutions which was meant to be there but nobody, uh, nobody, or, or I mean, the, 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 the people or the, 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 uh, the workers that had to build, they yeah. never put the, the, the fire extinguished on their place. And so we have this big fire and two young people, uh, they die. Uh, and one of these two were a part of my musical project. He was playing drum on my musical project and uh, that was a turning point for me mm. because uh, uh, the institution said, ah, but uh, we had put the, the fire extinguished. The, uh, uh, the, the Roma uh, community says, no, you never did. I know that they never did because I was there and I saw it. 
and I even helped many women in the settlement putting a tube on their system so that they can easier wash and give water to the flowers. So I know exactly all the water pipes connection that was there. Mm -hmm. And I am waiting still to go to a process and testify that this was not well done. Yeah. Probably the money disappeared or they just, they said they had put in it, but they didn't. Yeah. Sure. And so in this moment, I realized that uh, institutions and politics, they are, they don't want, they don't want to f solve the situation, to include the Roma community as the European community asked to in a good way so that they can keep their traditions, but have a better life and better education and better housing and better condition. They don't want to do that, especially in Italy today. Uh, even the pandemic have done it worse, but already much before this, uh, uh, you, you to speak about Roma is to put yourself in troubles in, 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 in a public contest. Uh, I mean, I've been uh, I've been accused uh, to be defending the bandits and the uh, illegals and the drug dealers and the uh, uh, car stealers and all this. When I say no, I I work with the children. Mm -hmm. I work with the with the young generation. It's very difficult to help the grown-ups because you institution are not intended to help them. So I, little man with a little organization, I cannot help them, but I can help the children yeah. because they are still, they can still build up a positive mind. They can still uh, get uh, uh, to learn about prejudice and to yeah. be able to build own character and own meaning about things. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there's something quite powerful in the work you're doing in bringing attention to this reality using your arts your own story um, and reflecting on what's around you to to share and to educate Roma and non-Roma um, and you know I think I think we're both in the arts world so clearly you know we we believe that there's power and transformation that could come from art um, but it's, you know, it also is reflecting something quite, quite powerful um, and, and very sad as well. And so it, it, it brings me to my last question, which is around the, the title of the piece, Children of the Wind. Can you share a little bit of insight into what that means and where that came from? Because it's a beautiful, very poetic title. Um, but, but also it brings up a little bit of, um, yeah, I don't know if sadness, but something melancholic in me when I, when I saw the name and when I saw the play, then, you know, it, it made sense, but I'd love to hear from your perspective where the title came from. Okay. Well, well, the title uh, itself comes from my grandmother. That's what uh, she used as words to say we are we are children of the wind. Mm. By that time, I didn't really understand it. Mm. But then this uh, word, I mean, I also read, then later I read that in the history of uh, the Roma people, they've been called yeah. the people of the wind because they never settled down. Uh, but uh, uh, I decided to use it as a title because uh, when I start working with the with the community, with the Roma community in in Rome, I there was uh, an area in the in the camp that had just been built, uh, the institutional camp. They had left uh, uh, an area o open and free where uh, in the plan, in the institutional plan, there should be the children ground, the playground. Mm -hmm. And uh, three years after, there was no playground yet. 
I went to the institution, asked when they're going to do it, and in the end they said they will not build this playground. So uh, one day I went into the camp and I, I called all the children together and I said to them, listen children, they're never going to uh, make a playground here, so let's build it ourselves. And uh, the children went crazy. They started helping me, uh, carrying uh, rubbish and cleaning with all the grown-ups staring at us and calling us crazy, you know, looking, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But the children, they were so enthusiastic that uh, in uh, one hour, the whole area was totally clean from everything. And there I realized the power of the children. Mm -hmm. The children, they have power. The children and the young people to a certain age, they have a special power that we have to learn to listen to. I say today, they are, they are my teachers mm -hmm. as much as I am their teacher. Yeah. You see, yeah. as a young artist, I refused to teach because I thought either you are an artist or you are a teacher. Also because I was, unfortunately, I met several teachers that you could feel they were frustrated because they wanted to do other kind of work, mm -hmm. but the, the only way they could make a living was by teaching. And so they could, you could feel a little bit this frustration in their teaching. Uh, but when I started to teach, which was by accident, somebody asked me uh, i have a i have a concert to do somewhere else for a, a week could you please cover me teach making a, a accordion lesson to the children this week and uh, this meeting was great i is there i found out that i became friend with them straight away and you know why because they had seen these children they used to sell roses in the very same square where I used to go and make a, a street theater. Mm. So they had seen my show. <laughs> and when they saw me arriving, they said, ah, oh, you are one of us. You are, you are part of us. Yeah. They didn't see me as an educator or a operator or social operator. They said, oh, you are a colleague. You also live from the hat. You also collect coins yeah. and uh, you are good fun. Yeah. I remember them every time I would start the show because uh, the street performing life is uh, you choose a square and uh, you stay there uh, half a day and every, every half an hour, every hour you make a show. And I saw them every time I would start the show, when they saw that the circle of, pe of public was surrounding me, they would stop selling roses and come and sit front row <laughs> to watch my show. And they had seen it many times. Mm -hmm. So when uh, they saw, they realized that I would be the accordion teacher, they were very happy. And uh, <laughs> the guy that I was supposed to, to cover, he later asked me to join the project and left it to me, actually. In the end, I was alone taking care of this project. Okay. So... Well, that's, you know, it, it feels full circle to, to um, yeah. hear about, to have seen the, the work, to speak with you about your own personal story and reality and and also how this links back to the next generation and you know all of your work and love and passion for children so um thank you so much it's it's really i've learned so much and also felt really inspired by by what you've you've said your your vulnerability as well in in sharing not only with the work but also in the interview so thank you so much thank you is there thank anything you. else any final words for our viewers or listeners that you want to share yes i i would uh, drop a word about uh, the independent theater yeah. because uh, it's thanks to them that uh, we are here having this yeah. conversation and uh, uh, now it's uh, the fourth 
key year I know them. I, it all started with the children of the wind. Yeah. And I'm very grateful to them for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity. And uh, I feel uh, for every year that passes, I feel more and more important uh, what uh, they are doing because uh, the, the team is growing internationally. Yes. You see, we, you are in England, there is people in Scotland, there are people in Ireland, in Spain, but also from the East, Eastern Bloc. Yes. Uh, they are working with Ukraine, with Czechoslovakia and other, other, other countries, Romania. Yeah. And this, I think, in the future will bring, will bring results because yeah. this is, uh, it's uh, no frontiers, no borders yeah. uh, movement. And this is very important for the future of humankind. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I think that uh, out of the last, uh, the last um, uh, level on which the, the, the Roma community has been pushed down to the lowest level of the society, I think we have a message that will uh, uh, form the future mm. of the humankind. Yeah. This is my deep belief. Mm, mm, well, it's very beautiful. And, and, you know, despite a lot of the um, heaviness and reality that you've seen and felt, um, you know, there's still so much love and hope, you know, and that's really powerful. And I, I stand right beside you or I dance right beside you. So, yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Rosa. Thank you.